So we're not going to spend a ton of time of actually drawing vectors, but you do need to have a visual representation of what it is. Um, it does have an initial point. The initial point for us is always going to be at the origin, uh, which is sometimes called the tail. And then the terminal point is wherever the vector ends up. In this case, it's in the second quadrant. So we've got, this is its magnitude. Whatever its length here is, is its magnitude. And then this, excuse me, thank you, um, would be theta or its direction angle. It is always measured with the positive x-axis. Now, um, there will be a few times where we have to use the concept of reference angles to help us actually find the true direction angle. That's why we're doing this at the end of all the trig stuff that we've done. Okay? Any questions about this so far? Now, the deal with vectors is we're going to end up putting these together, and you can't just put them together um, by adding their lengths, okay? Say this one had a magnitude of 4, and we had another one down here in the third problem that had a magnitude of 2. Okay? If we were putting those together, it would not have a magnitude of just 6, all right? What we have to do is we've got to break it down into its components. We've got to break it down into its horizontal components and its vertical components. So we're going to end up with some triangles here as well. All right, so that's what I was just talking about. It's component form. We use what we call pointy brackets, okay? Uh, not parentheses, because parentheses indicate points. But we use pointy brackets to express the vector in terms of its horizontal and vertical components. Horizontal, like always, is its x. Vertical, like always, is its y. So I'll give you a second to write that down, and then we're going to label that picture that we've got right there. <coughs> All right, so the blue line right here is representing the magnitude, as we labeled in the previous picture. Um, sometimes you will see that um, expressed as uh, kind of like absolute value bars around a letter, this vector, I'm just using V for vector, okay, but they can be named with any letter, um, but that represents the magnitude, absolute value makes sense, because absolute value is a distance, okay, but we don't consider whether it's positive or negative, it's just the sheer distance. All right, <clears throat> so it always has an angle, And we're going to label this as its x and this as its y. Now, if we are trying to find, if we know the magnitude and the angle, and we are trying to find the x component in relation to this angle, which side of that triangle is x? The adjacent. And the magnitude is the? Hypotenuse. So which trig function relates those two? Cosine. So the cosine of theta is equal to x, the adjacent, over the magnitude, which is the hypotenuse. So if we were solving this for x, we would multiply both sides by the magnitude. So that means that we can find the horizontal um, component or the x component by the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. That's going to give us our x component, our horizontal component of our vector. Similarly, if we know the magnitude and the angle and we're trying to find the y component, which trig function sine is going to relate those. Okay, sine of theta is equal to the opposite, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude. And if we solve for y, we get the magnitude times the sine of the angle is the y component. Now, that shouldn't be too difficult to remember because that's just like the unit circle. On the unit circle, the x-coordinate gives you the cosine. So x component, cosine of the angle. 
y component, sine of the angle. Of course, you've got the magnitude in there too. Okay. Now, sometimes we are given the components and we need to find the angle. Okay. Sometimes we're given the components and we need to find the angle. So, if we're given x and y, which trig function would that be? If we know x and y, tangent, opposite and adjacent. So, the tangent of theta, the angle, is equal to the opposite y over the adjacent x. And if we want to solve for theta, we use the inverse tangent. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of your y component over your x component. These three relationships are the basis for everything that we're going to do, so you've got to know this. Okay? You have to know these three relationships. Well, it'll give you different pieces of information. Sometimes you'll be given the magnitude and the angle, and you'll be asked to find the components. Sometimes you'll be given the components and asked to find the magnitude and the angle. It just kind of depends. So the first example that we're going to do is we're going to find the components of a vector that has a direction angle of 115 and a magnitude of 6. The vector has a direction angle of 115 degrees and a magnitude of 6. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it just really quickly and briefly um, so that I have the visual so that I can kind of check my answer. So 115 degrees is just a little bit more than 90 and a magnitude of 6. That looks good. Okay. That's 115, and this has a magnitude of 6. So, thinking about it before I even type anything in, my x component should be positive or negative? Negative, because I'm in second quadrant. My y component should be positive, and which one should be bigger? The y. The y, okay? Because of the angle, this is taller than it is wide, okay? So, uh, my x component is found by taking my magnitude times the cosine of 115 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode because we're doing an application. Applications are usually in degrees. 6 cosine of 115. Our x component is negative 2.536. Our y component would be 6 sine of 115. Which is 5.438. So in component form, we would write it like this. Okay. And again, it checks out. The x coordinate or the x component is negative, the y component is positive, and the y component is larger. There's more of a vertical component than there is horizontal. Which makes sense because of the angle. Okay? Alright, now sometimes I mentioned that you would be given the components and you'd have to find the magnitude and the angle. So if we think about it, this sets up a right triangle. So the magnitude is the hypotenuse. So we just use the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula, however way you want to look at it. Y'all do know that the distance formula comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Um, hopefully you've been explained that before. <clears throat> um, but it's just the x component squared plus y component squared. Take the square root. That is your magnitude. That is your hypotenuse. Okay, so for example, if I tell you that uh, we've got a vector that has components 3, 2, okay, so let's sketch that out really quickly. It has an x component of 3, a y component of 2, so here's our vector. We need to find the magnitude and the direction. 
So the magnitude is equal to the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. So that's 9 plus 4, which is the square root of 13. You can leave it in radical form, or if you want to know, that's about 2.332. Okay, is its magnitude. <clears throat> then we need to find its direction angle. So the direction angle is the inverse tangent. Theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, sine over cosine, inverse tangent of 2 over 3, which is about 33.69 degrees. which, if you drew your picture fairly to scale, it agrees. Okay, makes sense. Fairly shallow angle. Yes, sir? When you put down the square root of 13 minus 13, you mean the square root of 13 minus 13? Oh, I did the square root of the answer. I don't know where that came from. Thank you. 3.606. Thank you. I don't know where that came from. Okay. That would make sense because 13 is greater than 9. Square root of 9 is 3. I thought that seemed a little small. But I didn't check it. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. We're good for that? Let's do one where both of the components are negative. Negative 2, negative 5. Negative 2, negative 5 puts us in the third quadrant. Okay, so the magnitude of this vector is the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 5 squared. What do I tell y'all all the time about squaring negative numbers? Be careful. They gotta put you either have to put them in parentheses or just don't even include the negative. Okay? Squaring a negative number is the same as squaring the same positive number. So that's <clears throat> two squared is four, five squared is twenty-five, so that's the square root of twenty-nine, which is something bigger than five. Because five squared is twenty-five. Five point three eight five. our magnitude. <clears throat> and let's find theta. Theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. Inverse tangent of negative 5 over negative 2. The negative v matter here. 68.199. No, why not? Because it's going off of the other. It's going off of the negative thing. Right? Okay. Yes, that's how you end up figuring out the correct angle. <clears throat> okay. Where? What quadrant is 68.199 degrees in? Third. First. Our vector's in the third quadrant, but that's in the first quadrant. What your calculator does is it just spits out the first angle that it gets to. Okay. Negative 5 over negative 2 is 2.5. That gives a positive um, value for the tangent ratio. The first time that tangent is positive is in the first quadrant. Okay, so it's going to give you the first angle that it comes to. All you have to do is use this as a reference angle. Okay, so 68.199 is the reference angle right here between the angle and the negative x-axis. So how do we figure out the angle measured from the positive? Add 180. We add 180 degrees to it. So the actual direction vector is approximately 248.199 degrees. Okay, that's the actual direction vector. Do not just write down what the calculator sticks out to you. That's why I take a second to sketch it, or at least identify what quadrant it should be in, okay? 
because that's going to happen when your um, vectors are in the third or in the second quadrant.